Hey y'all, it's Brandon with Voodoo Forge. Now I want to talk to you about your slack tub, uh, your, your quench tub, your quench tank, whatever you want to call it. But basically the large container of water that you have uh, in your shop that you cool off things in and you get water out of to cool things off. Um, but uh, the slack tub, every shop needs one. And we all know what they're used for, right? Everybody knows what a slack tub's for. That's for when you make a horseshoe like in the Old West movies and then you gotta quench it in the water. Yeah, you always quench it like that. No. Now I agree, that's what they do in every Western TV show and, and Game of Thrones or whatever. They're always quenching everything. That's not necessarily what your quench tank is used for. It is used to cool things off, yes, but like you cool the uh, the tip of a hook off before you forge it so you don't crush it. You cool uh, your tongs off, uh, uh, punches, slitters, things like that, tools. You get water out of it to cool things. You use it, if you're using a coal uh, or other solid fuel forge, you use it for fire management, getting water out of there. Um, uh, so there's there's lots of of things you do with it, but in general when I'm done with the project, I do not quench it. I let it air cool off to the side. I've got plenty plenty of places that I put it and you just don't have to quench things, uh, everything when you're done with them. Now when you're dealing with uh, hardening and tempering, you're going to be quenching in oil and that is a completely different video. That is not your slack tub, okay? Uh, also, you know, when you get, you read a lot of the older uh, blacksmithing books, you know, you'll see that they would have a, 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 a quench tank uh, or a, a slack tub, and then they'd also have one with brine in it, which is like a salt and water mixture. This helps, uh, it makes water wetter. I'll do a video later on super quench, and I'll explain that concept. But uh, right now, we're just going to basically talk about your regular old water slack tub and, and ways to, to use that water in your shop on your projects. In my humble opinion, this is your best option for a slack tub, quench tank, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is a beer keg. Beer kegs are either stainless steel or aluminum. Either way, you don't have to worry about uh, rust. Uh, they are a little bit more difficult to get than they used to be um, when the you know used to beer kegs were were fairly Fairly common, you know the deposit on them was ten bucks people People didn't always take them back. They were you know If, if you could find a, a male under 25 chances are he had a beer keg around somewhere um, Well when scrap metal a few years ago went through the roof, uh, they started raising the deposit because people were were scrapping them. Now it's, it's pretty much impossible to find them at a scrapyard or anything like that. But uh, they are still out there. You might have to, to buy a keg. You know, um, uh, I found a couple at a, uh, a bar that had gone out of business. Uh, restaurants come and go all the time so I mean you might have to go to some auctions and things that's the best I can tell you to find one but uh, when you get one you just cut the top out and you have got a magnificent quench tub. Uh, other things that get used probably the the most common that I see in home shops is a five gallon bucket plastic bucket. Now this is not good because of the simple fact that it uh, well they melt uh, if you put something hot in there and it touches the side, you're going to melt a hole in it. So that's not good. Uh, you also see steel buckets sometimes, uh, and, and those aren't good because they rust. And uh, they're thin. My, my first uh, slack tub was a, a carbide drum, and it didn't have any kind of coating on it at all inside, and it, it rusted through in a matter of a couple of months. So it's better to have something thick and either stainless or aluminum. Now uh, quite a few people use the wooden like whiskey barrel halves and those are great. Yeah you've got plenty of room um, with those. They're not going to rust on you. They're not uh, going to do anything like that but you do have to make sure they stay full of water and swelled up otherwise they will um, 
they'll leak and those will eventually rot on you uh, I mean it's it's gonna be a while it's not gonna do it next week or anything but they will rot on you so I really think a, a keg is the best option now over next to it this is a uh, my big one uh, my tall one down here by the way this is about two foot tall uh, whereas this is is three foot uh, and this is a, a cut off uh, CO2 cylinder and I only fill it up when I need it because it is steel and it it rusts but if I'm doing like a uh, very long reverse twist or something I need my big tank but these are the uh, the two main water slack tubs that I use before I make a hook I'm going to quench this little guy right here so I can hit it without crushing it also end up quenching tongs through the day quite a bit Water cans are something that goes right in line with the uh, slack tub. Um, if you if you use a coal forge, you use these a lot in fire control, uh, making your coke, um, uh, things like that. You usually um, when I when I used to use a coal forge, I'd have a, a can like this and have holes punched where I could sprinkle water to help uh, help with my fire control. Um, now mostly what I use these for is, is quenching uh, material that is sticking out of the forge and has gotten a little hot just to cool it. Not really quench, it's not really at a, at a, a colored temperature. It's, it's still a black heat, but it's too hot for me to grab. I made this one uh, out of the bottom of an old uh, medical oxygen tank and because it's aluminum. So I figured, you know, hey, if I forget and leave it in my my slack tub it won't rust yeah it's it's ridiculously heavy <laughs> limited use looks cool though uh, but the cans you know this is you see these a lot in a lot of blacksmith shops and um, they're they're great but if you leave them in the in the slack tub just leave it stuck down in there it will rust rather quickly <laughs> Now this is something else that I keep to spot quench. Um, if I've got um, a spot that I need cooled because I'm going to be twisting next to it or hammering next to it, for some reason I want to cool a specific spot, I can use this and that stream of water to quench one spot and not quench the whole piece or the whole end. I can do stuff in the middle. Um, and it, you don't have to have a big bottle like this. You can use a uh, a plastic water or cold drink bottle and just put a pin prick in the top and fill it with water and squeeze it and get that stream of water. You can also use a hose for that. Okay, this is my oil quench tank. Um, I've got vegetable in there. Uh, I've got a lid on it because um, you know, critters like to get into it. Uh, that's an aluminum uh, beverage CO2 tank that I, I cut off. I uh, used aluminum because there are some things that you need to heat your oil before you quench uh, and so if I ever needed to do that I can put a torch uh, or uh, you know a roofing torch or something and heat the against the tank itself to heat the oil now there are people that are a lot better qualified to me to go into explaining quenching uh, tool steels and high carbon steels there are also specific quenches for specific steels uh, just using vegetable oil uh, is, is not an all-around quench, no matter what you see on, on television programs. There are specific quenches, and there are bladesmiths and toolmakers that have far more information out there on this than I do. Um, but I will tell you this, do not quench in used motor oil of any kind, transmission fluid, anything like that. Uh, cancer. Nobody wants that. So just uh, keep that in mind and uh, do your research before you start quenching high carbon steels and oils. Well, y'all, that's my slag tubs. That's how I use them in, the, in my shop. There are uh, other differing opinions on this, but uh, not gonna say that I'm, I'm the gospel. Uh, but 
that's the way I use them. I just, I don't quench everything. When I'm done, if you want to, go ahead. Keep in mind one thing, if you're using a lot of scrap steel, or you do not know uh, the steel, you can damage high carbon steels by quenching them at certain temperatures. You can change the grain structure and really damage the steel, make it very fragile. So keep that in mind uh, when you're quenching things in water. Um, so there is that. Uh, also in uh, Laura Lai Sims book, The uh, Backyard Blacksmith, Backyard Blacksmithing, anyway, you get the point. Uh, in her book, she talks about using uh, quench water uh, on poison ivy. I don't think she's recommending it. I think she just you know, says that she heard this. But using it on poison ivy to dry it up, I've never tried it. It's, my quench tub stays pretty funky. Uh, make sure you switch the water out in your quench tub. Dump it every so often. If you don't, you end up with mosquitoes. <laughs> you don't need a mosquito factory in your shop. Uh, but anyway, that's my two cents, my opinion, and, and, and the way I use them in my shop. Hopefully you got something out of this. If you have any questions uh, or comments, please leave them below in the, the comments down there. And uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe to the channel. All right, y'all behave yourselves now.